It's weird, I found this on my porch when I got back from the theater. I'm not sure what it is, but we are going to open it right now. So, we'll find out what it is. Keeping you all in suspense for a long time here. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's exactly what I thought. It just says Benicio Del Toro is cool again. It's good to know. Sicario. So Sicario is the movie that everyone's been blowing up my Twitter feed. Really got a review really got set. And it's directed by the director of Prisoners, and it's a very gritty, boots on the ground, realistic take on the war against the cartel. In this movie, we have Emily Blunt. She's an FBI agent. She gets recruited by this group of this government faction who's going against the cartel. And it's like maybe they don't always play by the rule book. Maybe they bend the rules to get the job done. Maybe you need to do that in a war like this, which causes tension between her and them. I mean, it's all Ultimately, that's the premise of the movie. Getting right into it, first of all, the movie is very well directed. It doesn't mean everything meshed perfectly, but I'm just saying when the director was like, I want this to come across, it did. And the acting was fantastic. Emily Blunt just gets better and better and better as her career goes on. I love seeing that. I love being able to say that. I love seeing actors progress and evolve. I mean, but Emily Blunt, when she first sprung on the scene, she's like, oh, she was the hot chick in that werewolf movie. Now she's Emily Blunt. No one messed with that shit. Josh Brolin was great in his role in the movie. He's not what stands out though. It is Emily Blunt and Benicio Del Toro. Benicio Del Toro is by far the most interesting character in this movie. You really don't know who he works for. You question, you're like, is this guy on our side? He's a spook of some sort. You don't know what government he answers to. You don't know if he answers to a government. He's like Boba Fett. All you know for certain is this dude's probably very good at killing folks. Very tension-filled movie. Very good at delivering that tension. And it's tension without a lot of explosive payoff. It's just tension. Like, example, there's a scene where they're just locked up in traffic and you know these cartel guys are in cars around them, but you don't know where, you don't know how it's gonna go down, you just know that people who don't like each other are kind of locked into a clusterfuck of traffic. Not a good place to be. You see, this movie's going for the long haul, it's going for the deeper meaning behind the war against the cartel in a realistic way. And in that, this movie slows to a crawl in many scenes, there's no other way around it, there's no other way to say it. I start checking my watch, I'm like, alright, let's see some war on cartel shit. I get that the movie's not trying to go for that thing and has succeeded in what it's trying to do, but I can't deny that in many scenes in this movie, I was checking my watch because I was bored. It was a little jarring when in the end of this movie the entire climax of the movie didn't have to do with Emily Blunt at all. It was all Benicio Del Toro's story. And it worked for me because like I said Benicio Del Toro's character was hands down the most interesting character in this movie. I'm just if they want to make a spin-off movie or a prequel movie all about Benicio Del Toro's character I'm down with that. But it was a little jarring where it's the entire movie follows Emily Blunt and then in the very end of the movie it's like oh all Benicio Del Toro is gonna wrap this movie up. Imagine Star Wars and it follows Luke Skywalker. That's the fish out of water scenario just like Emily Blunt in this movie, we are ultimately latching onto that character as our eyes into this world. And then imagine in the end of Star Wars, the entire assault on the Death Star, Luke is nowhere in it, and it's all being led by Han Solo. It's a little jarring, yeah, and it was a little jarring in this movie too. Now I will say this in this movie and movies like it. I can grade movies like this on one of two scales. And it does create some conflict within me. It's like, do I grade and rate the movie as a work of art, a film that's well shot and masterfully crafted? Or do I grade and rate the movie on entertainment factor like I usually do. I don't know what to say, but entertainment factor, replay value, it plays into movies like this for me. I'll tell you this, this movie is like Zero Dark Thirty meets Traffic. Zero Dark Thirty and Traffic, both very well made films, both well shot, both well directed, both well executed, well acted. Both movies I have seen once and once only and never really had the urge to see again. And in that, this movie goes down the same trail where it's like, oh, well acted, well directed, beautifully shot. Holy shit, the tension. Am I going to see it again? Eh, probably not. Guys, Sicario is well directed, well acted. Every Everybody in this movie kills it. They do a great job. And if I'm grading it solely on that, the quality of film as a tour de force. And the movie delivers. But seeing as how this is my channel and I'm going to rate this movie up how I view this movie, I'm going to say Sicario is a very good time. A great time. No alcohol required. Alright guys, so Sicario, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.